Tunnel Collapse, lessons from around the world, some lessons from countries right around the world about tunnel collapses. Everywhere there is a serious agenda for tunnels, Germany, United Kingdom, Singapore, Australia, China, South Korea, Japan, America, anywhere where there is a serious subsurface construction program, there are collapses. Singapore, March 2004, major project, metro project, everything was going well, collapse, fatalities, major damage to the infrastructure, major delays with the delivery, gas mains burst, electrical burst, telecommunications burst, Nicoll Highway breached, major, major damage, sophisticated clients, sophisticated contractors. My name's Professor Arnold Dix. I'm a specialist in subsurface risk. Join me while we discuss some of the disasters from around the world and the lessons that we can bring to Qatar to assist with the dynamic program here for delivering infrastructure. Britain, United Kingdom. We look to United Kingdom, excellence in what they do, but difficulties here. Vertical shaft, loss of water control, destroyed. We look now to another project uh, difficult conditions near the ocean, collapse. Down in the TBM shaft, loss of water control, flooded. Heathrow Express, 1994, collapse. Major projects, Germany, excellence in technology, major programs. Munich Metro, 1994, collapse. We then go to Cologne, the, uh, the, the metro project there, collapse. Fatalities, major infrastructure damage. Germany is renowned for its excellence, but collapse and uh, multiple fatalities. Here you see the houses actually falling in around. Likely mechanism, actually still unknown. Likely the retaining, uh, water retaining system failed, causing collapse. China, again, huge program of subsurface works. Collapses. Shanghai Metro, 2003, collapse. Difficult ground conditions, freeze-thaw method failed and the buildings around collapsed. We now move to South Korea. Again, enormous program of subsurface works. Here we are with the Daegu Metro and collapse. What we see, the US, major project in Seattle, largest TBM in the world, stuck, failure, now trying to be recovered. So our challenge at the ITA has been to try and bring some guidance for other countries from around the world about how to manage these risks and here at the Qatar Tunneling Society to share information so that we can do things better. Qatar, ancient seabed. We know that it's got reactive rocks. We know that there's expertise here. We know that there are large subsurface anomalies. And when we say large, we mean really big, not just a little bit. So with a major subsurface construction program, understanding how to better build under Qatar is essential. And today we can look to contemporary projects such as Copenhagen. Copenhagen has an extensive and uh, very demanding subsurface metro project in difficult conditions. And there they've taken the lessons of the collapses from around the world. And in order to protect their development, their very deep excavations, their uh, protection of buildings and protection of infrastructure. They've engaged in absolutely state-of-the-art monitoring. Uh, they have the experts from around the world assisting the program, identifying risks as they emerge in real time, real time, with thousands of data collection points in real time, looking for subsidence, looking for sudden changes in groundwater levels, looking for anything which is a signature of an impending disaster. And here at the disaster uh, so it's protection room, we see some of the practitioners monitoring in real time what's actually happening as the TBM approaches one of the station boxes. This is actually the TBM in the station box being protected. And up on the surface, a huge array of monitoring. So here's Soren Eskin to explain, Chairman, International Tumbling Association. This is a lot of attention to protecting buildings here. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. we have, uh, and actually also the 
contract is not based on settlement requirement or damage requirement or no damage requirement, I should okay. say, to the buildings. Um, but because we have a requirement for maintaining the groundwater level at any time during construction and also during operation, so for during operation, that's why all the structures are built watertight. Here, the diaphragm wall, then a membrane, and then an inner concrete lining wall. Okay. Um, um, so, so that in in the permanent situation, we will, we will just have a watertight structure, and in the temporary yep. facilities, we operate this uh, someone behind it. Yep. Yep. Of the water. Yeah. Okay. And today, it's been effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's effective. We we have to report. We have to report to the authorities on a monthly basis, uh, documenting that we, we maintain the, the water levels. And then it's natural fluctuations, yeah. because we see fluctuations over the season, and we have actually done monitoring of the groundwater level in the air two years ahead of the construction work, so, so we know what are the natural fluctuations, so we can stay within those levels. Great, thank you. So we have the lessons from Copenhagen and we have the lessons learned from around the world, the sharing of information, the sharing of our professional understanding of the special risks from as they've been revealed in disasters and as we understand them elsewhere, helps us go from the animator's dream, in this case the visualisation of something which isn't built but is very alive in the eyes of the, uh, the architects and the planners, it allows us to convert that dream into the safe, efficient delivery of major infrastructure for Qatar. And it's that discussion, and it's that exchange of ideas, and it's that exchange of learning that the Qatar Tulling Society, which provides a, a way for us to talk to each other, to share ideas, so that we can do even better what we're planning to do here in Qatar in the delivery of the major infrastructure. Thank you for joining me.